Hi everybody, Dacop here. Welcome back to my channel. Today's perfume review day and it's Chanel day and the votes are in in a matter of speaking because I will review all the perfumes sooner or later. But today is Jersey Chanel Parfum Day. I have uh, sometimes a lack of words to describe this perfume because it's beyond me. Um, Jersey exists as an eau de toilette 200 milliliter spray, 75 eau de toilette milliliter spray, 4 milliliter splash sample, 1.5 or 2 milliliter spray sample, and a 15 milliliter pure parfum or perfume or essence or concentration. The nose behind it is Jacques Paul's 2014 is the year it was released. So it's a perfume made decades and decades after Chanel's life. It's a perfume that you could call a Chanel perfume if you wish to believe it is. You could also say it has nothing to do with Chanel, except for the name, perhaps, because Jersey is one of the materials that have made Coco Chanel famous in the 20s and 30s, because she would use Jersey back in the day known as a material usually for working class and she would make luxury products out of it very comfortable for the women of the time when we say jersey today we usually believe it to be a cottony type of fabric but don't be fooled because jersey used to be a wool type of fabric and then mixed and then less and less of the wool and more and more of the cotton today we can even have jerseys that kind of don't really have any natural fibers in them when this perfume first came out, the first second I, I, I read about it, I thought, New Jersey? <laughs> no, it has to do with the fabric, the Jersey fabric. And today I will be reviewing the pure perfume of Chanel Jersey. What did I say? Jacques Polge, I put it on half an hour ago. Let's put on again to refresh it. I'm going to put it on a bit lower. So that it gets... Ah, I have no words to describe it. It's incredible. Okay, let's get to the notes. We have grass. Wildflowers, vanilla, which I don't sense, thank God. Musk, lavender, tonka bean, jasmine, and rose. It doesn't really list kind of the top notes, differentiating them from the middle notes and the base notes. It's kind of like a well-rounded, isolated in itself, living meadow of of fresh breeze breeziness or breeziness now when i smell the freshly put on on this part of my arm uh perfume it literally explodes with lavender but it is the most sophisticated and rich and almost oily smelling lavender that you could imagine. It goes beyond any lavender I have ever sensed or smelled. It is literally, you know, usually when, when you list or classify scents within a perfume, you would usually say, uh, it smells like this or like that. It has this ingredient or that ingredient. And then kind of the ingredients within the perfume come close to the natural scent. Like if you say there's, there's peach in a perfume, you don't really smell the peach like you would smell a peach when you bite it, when you eat a peach and you smell it. In this case, however, it's as close as it gets. This is lavender. Lavender at its purest, most luxurious form. It's a lavender you have never smelled anywhere else. It even maybe tops the original lavender, the real deal, because this one is just so much more rich and elevated. Um, Jersey comes in this paper package, the 15 milliliter, um, let's see if it focuses on it, the 15 milliliter version of it at least, it's splash, a 
and it's so rich. Now there is iris in here. Something in there is irisy, even though it tells me jasmine. But I sense musk as well. Well, maybe it is the jasmine and some iris, something in there. Up here I have it on since almost, yeah, yeah you could say half an hour. It's warming up in a way. I don't know what to say, guys. I'm really blown away completely because it's not, it's like unlike anything I have ever smelled. I mean, some of my friends would kind of smell it and they would love it. Others would say it's a little bit like, um, like an older perfume because I guess a lot of people have that memory or vision of their grandparents or parents using lavender in their wardrobes to catch away moths. Perhaps it has that touch as well because it is lavender. There's no, you know, escaping it. But I guess it's all relatable. It all depends what sort of memory or vision you have of lavender when you connect yourself to this scent in particular. I mean, to me personally, lavender is not just the smell or the scent used to catch away moths, you know, the ones that, the, the nasty ones that eat your clothes, that eat the wool mostly or silk. To me, this is a lavender that transcends all of that. It goes beyond that. It's a lavender that, it's a lavender that has been enriched with a lot of other pure, like essential oil ingredients that make it go beyond just pure lavender. Something in here rounds it up. And to me, it's the iris. It could be the jasmine. Heck, maybe it's even the vanilla that I usually don't like, but... <laughs> I don't know what to say. It's rich, it's powdery, it's textured. It's inequivocably Chanel. You know immediately that this is a Chanel perfume. And it's so on point and it's so, so sophisticated. It's like nothing they have ever made. By the way, when I purchased this uh, perfume in the Rue Saint-Honoré uh, boutique in Paris, um, I had a really, really lovely talk to, to the, the lady uh, that, that works there. And of course, you know, at the beginning when you come into a shop, I mean, they're always kind and polite to you, but you first got to kind of prove that you're worthy in a way. I know that this sounds a bit arrogant now, but that's how the shit ticks. Basically, they got to know that they are dealing with somebody who knows their, their shit, basically. So, you know, she started off talking superficially about things and I kind of, in my very super decubish type of way, just like cut the crap and head straight to, to the jugular or for the jugular, which in this case was details, particular details about perfumes. You know, I was, I was kind of indecisive between the Bois des Îles Pure Perfume, even though I do have, have it already in kind of its vintage form in Jersey. And then she said, but you know, she was talking about Bois des Îles and you know, you know what Bois des Îles inspired the making of what? And I was like, oh yeah, Egoist, of course. And she's like, yes, how did you know? I'm like, I know. And not just that, but Egoist was also called, uh, Bois Noir before it was called Egoist for a year or two. She's like, oh. And then you could see in her eyes something clicked and she's like, okay, he knows what he's talking about. Let's get to business. We started talking about number five. And I did not know this. Some of you might have known this. I did not know this. She told me that the first, first version of Chanel number five had over 300 ingredients. Now we know that it has 83 or that it had 83. The myth says 83, right? Well, now there's a new layer added to the myth that basically as Chanel envisioned it, it had 300 ingredients, but it was back then already 1920s too expensive to produce. So right after the first one was made, it was reformulated, smelled the same, but with a limited amount of ingredients downsized to 83 or 84. Now, I'm thinking, how would it be if I could get my hands on a 300 ingredient version of Chanel number no. five? <laughs> I'm speechless. So as she told me that, I was like, wow, I did not know that. I'm eternally grateful for this bit of information and I'm sharing it with you guys. But um, as far as Jersey goes, she personally, I mean, she knows her craft. She is a real Chanel worker. Jersey is her favorite of the pure parfums. 
of between the exclusives or also the regular releases. And I'm starting to understand why. This perfume casts that missing link or bridge that I personally consider missing between, for example, the Dior Privé line and the Chanel Exclusives line. The Dior Privé line has that special particular touch in their perfumes. It's more decadent, it's more opulent than the Chanel ones. The Chanel ones are more sophisticated. Dior ones are, are textured, are rich, are very, very flamboyantly decadent. This one is exactly in between the two. This one is the bridge that unites the Dior Privé line to the Chanel Exclusives line, in my personal opinion, because there's hints of Au Noir in here, because Au Noir also has lavender and licorice. That jasmine-y, irisy touch is so Bois d'Argent, in a way. And yet that lavender, that sophisticated, rich, expensive lavender in here, makes it Chanel. And I don't know how, and I don't know what Jacques Polge was doing, what he was on, how many years it took him to make this, but he made a wonder because and it's so, so amazing. I mean, between the one that's on here now for like 35 or whatever minutes and this one, that's a bit fresher. I just know more and more like the subtle differences between heading down towards the base notes and heading up towards the top notes. Difference between top notes and the base notes, now that I've uh, cut and come back half an hour later, because I wanna really go into the depth of this. It's as if you were in um, like a field of, of, of lavender bushes or plants or whatever you wanna call those purpley, beautiful scented flowers. And it's summer and we're close to sunset. So you could hear the crickets, you could hear all you know the noises of nature in the background, filling up this ginormous field. And it is close to water. There's some sea somewhere that you don't see it, but you know it's there. And um, the fact that the crickets are making the noise that they're making makes you kind of feel the scent of the lavender even more. You've been out the whole day, you've been sweating, you've been to the sea, you, you went to swim and then you, know, you came out, you didn't go back home, you did not take a shower yet, you still have the salt on your skin, on your dry skin. And you have the residue of sun tanning oil and as I, I know a lot of people say it's very unhealthy to do so, but you know, back in the day, I remember my grandparents, they kind of loved to use uh, olive oil on their skin uh, when, when they were in the sun. I've heard of many people say it's not healthy at all to do so, but they used to do so. And that kind of particular smell, there's like a hint of olive oil on the skin in the hot sun as the sun goes down, mixed with the lavender scent of the lavender fields next to the seaside is kind of what I'm going for here with this smell and that's what it gives me that's the vibe it gives me and that fresh oceany breeze mixed up with the kind of the salty residue on the skin that you might still sense out with that hint of oil and the lavender that's the scent and now that it's kind of warming up on me and and uh, going deeper and deeper I do sense out that vanilla, but it doesn't annoy me. It doesn't create that feeling of, of cloyingness, of cloyiness or cloyness or cl the cloying feeling. I don't get it, which I usually do get a lot from uh, uh, vanilla or very heavily vanilla filled perfumes. It's very down to earth. You know, it's a segmented perfume. It's a scent that is very, very united to nature. But at the same time, it's so elegantly elevated up there that it's it's meant for, for kings and queens, you know, and really, really the highest level of encounters in the evening uh, with uh, government, diplomats, presidents, whatever have you. But I'm kind of feeling more the 70s, 80s vibe here 
more 60s, 70s than 80s, where there was a certain type of class and a certain type of way of speaking. You know, if you watch movies in English from the 60s or the 70s, now even if they were shot in America, they oftentimes have that accent going on. Um, it's not British, it's not, a, it's not the American of today, but it's a very sophisticated, higher kind of elegant accent. And it's disappearing. Actors don't use that nowadays anymore. It, it, it's, not, it's just something that doesn't happen anymore. But if you were to, to watch Alfred Hitchcock movies, or if you were to see any movie from, well, I mean, okay, even 50, 50s even more so, and 60s, or even the comedies back, back in the day, you know, movies that were shot as comedies, they always have that very elevated tone and accent when they speak English. That's what this perfume reminds me of. And why the 80s? The 80s because, um, as far as we know, a lot of, and the lady in the, in the, in the Saint Honoré uh, boutique told me that, uh, yes, because of the laws and regulations that are out there, Chanel, as all other brands, have reformulated their perfumes. You can still recognize that they're their perfumes, but they're different because the ingredients have been, you know, substituted for, for something else, for an artificial ingredients, for, for some ingredient that does not go against the anti-allergen laws or whatever sort of laws there are out there. Um, and, and she told me, you know, Shalimar is not the perfume it used to be at all. And here we are in a Chanel boutique and we're talking about Shalimar. That was really funny. Because she was a huge fan of Shalimar and she can't smell it anymore. This perfume was created in that era of prohibitionism, you know. Everything was prohibited. A lot of 2014, you can imagine. So many ingredients are kind of going down the drain. And as, as the future comes, as more time passes, we get less and less the opportunity of smelling intense fragrances for what they really are. This one comes very close to that vision and memory I have of, of fragrances that I smell when I smell fragrances from the 80s and the 90s that haven't been reformulated yet or bottles of non-reformulated perfumes, vintage bottles from back in the day. It gives me that whiff of opulence and sophistication of character that I lack in a lot of perfumes today. Not that I require extreme character in every perfume. I know that citrusy notes, perfumes that are very fresh, you know, flankers of the, I mean, the Chanel Chance series, which I will be reviewing and already started with Eau Tendre, and you can check the review up above in the card section. Um, I love it. I love them too. If they're created with the right pizzazz and the right kind of um, energy and, and the right willpower and the right consciousness and also intelligence, savoir-faire mostly, of how to blend in the ingredients, you could still achieve wonders. This one, however, transcends that. It goes beyond. It goes back into the 80s and even further back and gives me an, a feeling of something that I have smelled before, but I haven't in reality. And it makes me feel like I have found a treasure from the past. And that, to me, as a fragrance lover, is a great feeling. It gives me a great, 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 great emotion um, because it makes me feel like I have found a treasure that not a lot of people know about, so that makes me feel very special because I think not everybody in the street is going to smell that way. And I think that's great when, when you're looking for fragrances that are supposed to underline your individuality rather than eliminate it, like CK1 would do, for example. It's a very bland, homogenic perfume, right? This one isn't. This one will definitely make you shine. And it'll give you that framework of sophistication that Chanel can do. At, at, at when when it is at its best and this one is Chanel at its best I think Chanel would have loved it it's very powdery it has that reminiscence of number five when it dries down of the pure perfume when it dries down and it gets to that powdery tone and note this one has it as well it has that opulence in there that powder that is oily at the same time and moist and as far as lavender is concerned, not just the scent of lavender is key here. What else is key is the color of lavender, that special, particular, intense purple. And all of its shades, you know, 
the little flower is kind of really, really dark and tense in the middle. And then as it kind of opens up, the sides of the little tiny petals, they, they kind of are lighter, of a lighter tone of purple. But the inside is so dark, it could almost be blue, except there is no blue in nature. So it's as blue as it can get. And those tones of purple, those shades of purple, like if purple had a smell, it would be Jersey. I kind of smell out purple when I when I smell this perfume. And, and, and purple as the color of, as an aristocratic color, not, you know, the blue, the color of kings or whatever, but purple is the color of, of, of kings and queens as well. And that purple is on velvet. And it's a very thick and rich velvet. Very, 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 very thick. You know, little hairs on the velvet, they're very thick and shiny. And it absorbs light like a sponge would absorb water. So there's no reflection of light. It's not a cheap velvet. It's an expensive velvet that absorbs the light. It mattifies light. It makes you feel like when you look into that fabric, you could just fall into it because it makes you feel a little bit dizzy because you can't really notice what is the actual distance from you to that fabric. That's how expensive and well executed the velvet is. That's this perfume. To a T, you have that purpley velvet and you're falling into it. And you notice that all around you is lavender. Here's a shout out to Lanyard Smith. Lanyard, my dear, I know uh, that you will love this perfume. Actually, I think you already said you did, or you do. Check out Lanyard Smith. He is the best perfume reviewer out there. His knowledge transcends anything and everything. And not just that, his love for Elizabeth Taylor does as well. And hence, the double reason for my shout out. Elizabeth Taylor was famous for her purple eyes. That's the type of purple we're talking here. That's the type of elegance and sophistication and luxury we're talking about here. We're talking Elizabeth Taylor purple eyes. That's Jersey. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you like this video and this review. If you have, don't forget to share it. Give me a thumbs up and leave me comments in the comment section below. Let me know what you think about in general the L'Exclusive line by Chanel and which one would be your favorite exclusives range perfume, whether it be Chanel or the Dior Privé line or the MS Sans from MS and so on and so forth. Also, some of the more classical ones and more simpler ones, which I adore just as well. Like, for example, <laughs> I have it here, Chance Au Vive, because I'm kind of toying with the idea of how to kind of approach it. Or the Eau Fraiche, for example, toying with that as well. There's a lot of, lot of, lot of things going on. Anyway. Let me know what you guys think. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you wish to see more. Love you. See you tomorrow. Bye. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed my video. And if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and check out some of my other videos. I'm also on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. So come on over guys and join the fun.